This is Shepard Humphreys with Nomad Rifleman, and over the years I have made so many experiments and mistakes and, and failures trying to set up steel targets, and I'm out here on the ranch today just working and uh, tinkering around, and I thought I'd make a video and help y'all maybe avoid some of the mistakes I've made over the years. And rather than welding this up the way I did, I think a person would be better off getting another one of the T-post hooks, uh, not the one you see in this image, but a little bit further on, and just welding that on the bottom. I'll show that later. Since they're only 20 bucks each, it'll sure save you some welding and messing around. You notice where I have the hook welded on is pretty low, so I can still slide a T-post pounder on top of that. That gives me some uh, some options. I can either use the hook on the top of the T-post or I can use the hook I welded on. Now this is one design I did and I'm going to show you here it's a little bit too steep where I welded the, uh, the T-post attachment. It's just a little bit too much. And then you'll also notice the angle, it's about a, yeah, a little bit less than a 90 degree angle. I've messed around with different angles and it really has more to do with the weight than the angle. I'm sure the angle matters too, but this one wanted to tip forward too much. And by the way, if you're wondering why I'm making this video, it's just that I, I have spent so many dozens of hours and many hundreds, thousands of dollars making targets and setups and, and doing the whole thing over the last five to ten years and uh, hey it's just something that you know, I wish somebody had been there to tell me all the ins and outs and the little tricks so that's what I'm doing for you the only thing I'd, I'd ask is if you do click on any of the links below that takes you to Amazon and then they'll give me a little percentage doesn't cost you anything extra but they give me a little uh, thank you uh, kickback for having sent you their way uh, for anything you buy so that would that'd be greatly appreciated if you do that and now let's get back to it now this one, rather than having a, a T-post welded onto it as the thing, thing to slide onto, these are actually two T-posts. And then I've got a form stake that uh, I welded onto it. And I actually really like this design. Uh, this might be one of the better ones I've come up with. Uh, pretty handy. For those of you who do target shooting in cattle country, you know that you, if you put a T-post up in the middle of a field, the cattle will just rub against it and knock it over. So you have to come up with some other solution. I like the idea of driving form stakes. They're easier to get them into the ground, but there are sometimes it's too rocky for that. That's why I have those triangular bases behind there. Now this is a, a post that I made. I put two pipes on the bottom, one to fit over a T-post and one to fit over a form stake. And a good thing about this is I can use this same post, just put the T-post hanger on the top of it, and it's kind of a versatile little option. And here I'm gonna be demonstrating how I'd put it on a, a T-post, and whether it's the T-post you weld onto the, the V like that, or whether it's the one that you actually drive into the ground. And then here I'm demonstrating the smaller pipe sliding right onto the form stake. And that is my preference right there. Now, something to think about is, uh, and I don't have an a image of it for you, but your pipe will spin on the form stake. So if that's an issue, drill a hole in the pipe, weld a nut to the outside of it, and then thread a screw through so that you can tighten it to the form stake if you need to. That'll keep it nice and straight, as I'm showing right now, so it's straight toward the shooting location. And that's really important. So I've tried a number of different uh, flasher systems, and uh, these are the three that I've most recently given a go. Um, my favorite of the three is this one, and I had to build my own base for it. The silly thing about some of these, they, they come with a Velcro attachment. Well, the problem with that is that if you put it on and then your target is off just slightly, the flashers, you can't, you can't see it which is really dumb. It makes me think that whoever invented some of these didn't actually do any actual extreme long distance steel shooting. Um, I'm sure the LEDs are plenty bright, but 
yeah, it just didn't work. So that was the case with this one. The, uh, no, shoot, I'll put it down in, not the, the Magneto Speed. It's the best I've found. They downgraded to a Bluetooth adjustment that used to be able to do them from the inside, which was way better. But to determine how, uh, how the flashers work, there were four or five different options you had. Now it has to be done by Bluetooth, and that sucks, because Bluetooth frequently doesn't work. And, uh, yeah, anyway, it had Velcro here to attach, so you'd put the Velcro strip on the back of your target, and then attach the, the back of this to the Velcro. Well, then the only way that you can adjust it is this way. And that's just not enough, because, again, if the target is even slightly off, this is the only adjustment you have is up and down. Um, and that's not enough to get the right angle. And they have this cool little red thing that slides on the top and kind of can, you can get it lined up where you want it. Except if this target was how it is, I've driven the T-post in, gone to all that hassle. It's not easy to change T-posts when you're in rocky soil and they've decided they want to go in like this and you're over there. It's, it's tough to do. So my solution was to just go on Amazon. I'll leave a link. Get one of these cool little balls. It'll you know, let me swivel stuff. Get that and then get a little uh, clamp and an old piece of metal and do a little bit of work there. First I'll show you what it is that it, it lets me accomplish, then I'll show you how I did it. So the goal is, my partner Scott typically is back at the, uh, he's back at the shooting location and I'm a mile or however far away getting the target set up. So I paint this white each time. I'm going to clamp this onto the back of the target and get that stationary. And then that allows me to get that firmly attached and the vibration will go through this metal. It won't go through all kinds of material. I've tried other stuff and it doesn't always work, but it will go through the metal. Then here I can make my adjustments and I have up, down, you know, I can go anywhere I want and still make sure that I'm hidden behind the target. So this, this part is the only part that's gonna get hit by a bullet, which is, has happened once. Usually it hits here and it'll knock the whole thing off, but no harm, no foul, and it's a good conversation point. So this allows me to get on my radio and I say, hey, Scott, um, how does it look? And he'll say nothing, nothing, and then all of a sudden, ooh, that's good. And then I lock it into place here, and then I let go, I give it a little shake, and then I say, Scott, are you ready? I'm going to hit it again, and I tap it. And I get the, the lights coming on, which I can't tell from my angle if they are. Yeah, I can see it there. I don't know if you can, but it's orange. Orange, uh, the way we have it set up is if a supersonic bullet goes past, it flashes orange. If there's an actual vibration, then uh, or a hard one, then it's supposed to hit uh, red. I don't know if you can see that red, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, so this is the best setup that I have come up with. It does require having somebody on the other end with a radio, but this is the only flasher system I found that works. The kind I don't like, well, this is my second favorite, but the challenge with these Hornadies is they're awesome, but you attach them to your target and they're cheap enough that you buy them by the five pack and you just don't you know, buy five five packs. And then when it hits, it gives a good flash. It doesn't have to be directly on, but if this is vibrating right up here, this friction point, and this thing's swinging in the wind, this thing is going off constantly. So you have hours of looking down range and getting these false positives. It's not hitting, which you think it is. Or well, you know it's not because you didn't just shoot. And then you finally get ready to shoot that particular target. Well, you don't know if you hit it or if it was just another vibration. I contacted Hornady. They don't have a way yet to damper it. I've tried putting a few pieces of you know, rubber matting between, but I haven't found the perfect solution. I hope somebody does and either it contacts me, I'll give an update and include that solution if anybody experiments and has a good solution. And then so far, my least favorite has been this one. One of the things I don't like about it is I, as you can tell, I kind of monkey rig stuff a little bit, but there's no good, easy way here for me to drill a hole through and attach this to something metal. Cause I guess this would probably flash just as well as the magneto speed but i don't have a good way of attaching it to this because velcro doesn't work if you've actually been out in the dew the snow the rain especially if you're going to leave these out a bit they're going to bump around this velcro is absolutely useless so i'm not really sure of a good solution until just now when i was looking at that there's some little bolts that go through and i can see the end of it here 
I bet I could just get a longer one with the same threading and build something off of that. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that nobody commercially makes the entire solution. Um, boy, oh boy, have we tried everything over the years, hanging them from chains and from wires from the corners um, with poles, that yeah, just all kinds of poles, um, <laughs> slide-ons. Uh, there have been all kinds of issues we've, we've dealt with. And uh, comes down to it, this is our favorite solution. Notice the difference in these two. I guess the easiest way to see it would be if I put them up side to side. You can see this one has a way better hook in it than this one. I like the ones with a good deep hook because then if it's tilted down more, it'll still hang on to the And tire. by the way, this is the part I mentioned earlier, this hook. That's what I would weld onto the bottom, kind of like I'm demonstrating there. That's easier than those rods I tried to weld. My favorite system for attaching wind flags at the target is I just weld very poorly. <laughs> I weld this piece on. On this one, I used a, a key ring and a clamp to put it on, but just as well, just a bent piece of wire with duct tape works beautifully. These are just cheapo Amazon airport wind socks. They don't tell you exactly the speed. Maybe a pilot would know how to figure it out. So yeah, they're not as good as the NRA things, but they work for me. When I use the T-post pounder, sometimes it, it bends the top of the, the post, and uh, that's an issue because then the, the hanger won't slide on well enough. This is my solution. Just grind off those edges. That seems to work pretty well. Slides right on. And, uh, yeah, I've just found that, you know, you start driving a T-post in the perfect direction, but it doesn't always agree with that, so it goes off in a different direction. Here's another tip for you when you're pounding in a T-post and you're using that, that pounder. When you come up on your upstroke and then you, you start to come back down, make sure you haven't come off the top of it. Because I'm not saying this has ever happened to me, but if you do come off of the top of it and then the bottom lip of the pounder catches the top of the post and you're bringing all of your strength and big muscles down to really pound it hard, it could kind of tilt that uh, pounder over so that it hits you right in the top of the head. And I imagine that that would bleed a lot and kind of make you dizzy. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I've only done it once and it was at a, a tactical training for some security this high speed low drag thing and uh, I walk over to the group and I said okay we're gonna do a medical scenario let's say just I just had some head trauma and they started laughing oh Shepard you really went all out putting ketchup on that and I said nope let's let's treat this like it's real <laughs> yeah, I've only done that once though well alrighty then uh, that's what I've thought of thus far let me know uh, if there are some parts that I didn't go into enough detail about uh, anything you want more more details measurements that kind of thing, and uh, I'm more than happy to, to get those to you. Uh, right now, usually April's and November's, I try to get out of Wyoming for a bit and head south, uh, but uh, within you know a couple, of few months, I can get another video made if you, if you have some questions about that one or just respond to you personally. So feel, feel welcome to comment down below, and I'll do a follow-up if necessary. Thanks, y'all, for listening, and uh, bang, ding. <laughs>